Welcome, everybody. This is the Orlando Sentinel Editorial Board. I'm Chris Blucher, the Opinion Editor, joined by Insight Editor Jay Reddick and um, Scott, our columnist, Scott Maxwell. Um, you'll see them on camera a little later. Um, we are today doing the Republican primary in House District 20, thir sorry, House District 39, which is, um, which is north and um, North Orange County and a little bit of Seminole County, um, including Zellwood, um, part of Apopka, um, Winter Garden. And, um, and the winner of this, um, of this particular race will go on to face um, a Democrat in the fall. So I will um, go ahead and get started. Now, today we have with us two candidates, Randy Ross, Doug Bankson, a third candidate has opted not to join us, which is fine. And um, so we will um, we will enjoy talking to these gentlemen. Thank you so much. Okay, and um, I'm going to start with um, with um, Mr. Bankson and ask you. Um, Florida has been the beneficiary of torrents of federal money over the past couple of years. Um, how can the legislature prepare and meet the um, needs when that, that money dries up um, and, and get ready for that? Okay, well, thank you for hosting the forum, first of all. It's always great to be able to get our voice out so the people know who they're voting for. And again, with all of the federal funds, I think it's important and, and it's good that the uh, present administration has looked at that well and has set aside a strong buffer. Uh, this is something for the last six years as I've been here in the city of Apopka, uh, in, as a commissioner, I've, I've been uh, advocating for that all along because if you don't have that when the difficult times come, then it hits you and then the only place to go is the, the backs of the, the voters. And uh, you know, it's just something that I don't want to do in that sense. So I think having healthy reserves is the strong point. And uh, we've done that. Uh, the governor uh, put forth a great budget. We've got a lot of reserves there. A lot of uh, things that are set aside for us to attack the issues concerning uh, our workforce needs, the workforce housing. Uh, with it, what's gone on crazy in our nation, we've seen people flooding into our state. And I think it's because of the great policies that they've already uh, put into place. But at the same time, it's caused those prices to go up. And again, the flow of flood of money into the system has created the inflation, which many people see rising price, prices as inflation. Now, that's actually the result of in, inflation. And so because of what's gone on on a federal level, having strong reserves on the state level is the best way for us to prepare ourselves. Secondarily, is to make sure that our businesses are strong. And, uh, you know, I I've always advocated for our businesses, from our small businesses up to the corporations, but we need to have a strong backbone when it comes to that, because that's what really causes us to have the strength economically and specifically uh, our educational, or I'm sorry, our, our agricultural, that's what I meant to say, our uh, hospitality, uh, these different uh, ones, our, our energy fields, these are key fields that I believe if we support and get behind that there's a strength that can help us be recession proof, uh, regardless of whose definition you use. Mr. Roth. Same question. Same. You know, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I've been on the other side of politics for a long time and it wasn't until my mom went into a nursing home that I learned how backwards the medical Medicare system is and, and hospitalization processes in the state. So when I, when I hear your question, what I hear you talking mostly about are the people that are potentially going to be in need. And that is one of the reasons that I immediately will file Betty's bill which is a desired opportunity to, pick, to do a drill down into the Medicare system in Florida, take a look at the guardianship flow, uh, program in Florida. Listen, when my mom was in a nursing home uh, rehabbing from a hip replacement, I got to see firsthand how challenging it is for a senior citizen. And I think that's kind, kind of where we're going here. Remember the average age of the person that can vote in our district is over 50 years old. And as a result of that, that means a lot of us are looking at either having dealt with a senior issue or we are seniors. And I think that that to me is going to be one of my priorities to make sure that when we come out of this process, listen, we live in a capitalist society. So I support capitalism. I support the opportunity for businesses to make money. And I want to see everybody grow and strive. Unfortunately, the people that are impacted the most sometimes are the people that don't have 
the opportunity to increase their income. They're on a fixed income. And so as a result, that is why I'm focused on seniors. Uh, I've been told I'm, that I'm a one issue candidate for that. I'd rather go to Tallahassee with, Tallahassee with one issue than no issue at all. Um, and that is primarily why I'm running for this particular seat at this time. I can uh, pop in with a question about education. Uh, it's a broad topic, but generally, uh, I guess we are interested. There's a lot of people have different uh, versions of choice that they support. Can you tell me wh where you guys stand on um, with uh, voucher schools and charter schools and also accountability, uh, whether they should be expanded uh, in, in, in those regards? I'll start with you, Mr. Ross. Of course, I'm pro parental choice and pro parental rights. One of the things that was so disturbing to me that came out of this, and you know I'm an openly gay conservative, Scott, um, I was disappointed that it was called this don't say gay. The word gay was never mentioned in the, uh, the language of that bill. I want parents to be able to make decisions on their own of when and how their children are taught certain issues. Uh, including whether it be um, issues regarding sexual orientation and such. But the bottom line is I think parents should be able to decide where they want to send their kids to school and be able to send them there with uh, pride and uh, purpose. Because guess what? A good education is central uh, to how we, we survive in, the, in this society. But I also tell you that I grew up in a time um, when uh, college was really the only recommendation I look back on it. I went to college, but I guess what? I'm, t I'm learning more and more every day, especially here in Central Florida, how critical vocational education is. There are people that I know that make more money than I make in life that are welders and, and they do all these different things in, in the industry that we happen to be surrounded by. So there's a lot of different ways to look at that. And I know that it's not necessarily always popular to say um, pro parental choice, but I do believe that the parents have the right to make the decision regarding education. I believe the governor made the right decision in making that a law. All right, let me just follow up since I also asked about accountability. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? We've written a lot about how there are virtually no standards for the voucher schools. Uh, teachers don't have to have degrees. The curriculum isn't doesn't have to be publicized. The schools aren't graded. Is, is that all good by you or do you have any thoughts on accountability? No, I think they should all be graded by the same system. I mean, if you're going to yeah, have any funds at all that are federal funds, state funds, local funds, whatever, that go into any type of education platform, they should have the same uh, rule of law, standard of practice, et cetera, that we hold our own um, public school teachers to. Um, why would they get a pass um, and, and not be allowed to be, you know, have the same standards of, of education practices? Okay, thank you, Mr. Banks. And your thoughts on choice and accountability? Yes, well, great question. That's something that really is in my wheelhouse, uh, education. Uh, my strongest supporter is my 104-year-old grandmother now. She's 104, just turned that a couple of weeks ago. And she's been an educator all, educator all of her life. She literally, the first school she taught in is still standing up in Iowa, a one-room schoolhouse. And so I learned early for a love of education. But again, we've gotten away from the purpose of education. And I think HB7 really brought us into order concerning many facets of that, uh, as far as the standards of teaching, teaching kids how our government operates, how we were founded. Uh, and so when it comes to choice, I think that's got to go back to the parents. I mean, these are our children. And, uh, you know, as Randy hit on several topics there, there's, uh, it's important that we tailor school to the child. Uh, we actually have a private school. We have over 270 students now and uh, just bought property for a larger campus because people are looking for those options. Two thirds of our students are actually minority students and they're doing very well and excelling. Uh, but the focus that we have, we are going after is a vocational path as well as secondary education. We have to find the path that best fits the student and the parent knows their own children. So as, as was said, I absolutely support uh, giving the parent the choice for that because it gives them the right, the ability to tailor those things for their child. One of the things that we're focusing on, I'm an instrument rated pilot as well, and we actually have inst uh, instigated a new uh, aviations program uh, for this fall. And in the aviation program, they'll have different pathways from not just pilotage, but also drone technology and aviation mechanics, which is actually a greater need than pilots right now. Uh, so having that course, there are many of the kids that are excited about that. They'll come out of high school with a degree uh, in, in the me aviation mechanic and just short of an AA degree. Okay. And <laughs> honestly, their, their starting salary will be higher than the, the average person that's still paying off their college debt. So I agree. We need all of the options there and accountability. 
You want me to answer that second one? Because I'm seeing. Oh, my- yeah, I was hoping you would during the first two minutes, but yes. Okay. Well, I'll keep it quick there. Uh, we need standards, obviously, of education. And actually, for our school, that's one of the things that we saw. There are standards in private education as well. And I sought to find something that even exceeds the standards that are out there. And our students are meeting that. They literally just came back from nationals, all with superiors and excellent ratings in their different fields. Uh, so we're real proud of that. And yes, we need to make sure that our kids are making, that when they graduate, they have something that's really worth something rather than a piece of paper. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. I had a question to, to throw in for the two of y'all. I know that uh, you know we're, it's, a, it's a district kind of race. I'm wondering, it's easy to look at the big issues and we'll cover a bunch of the big issues from a state perspective, but are there any issues that you feel are specifically tailored for your district and 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 what are your uh what are your thoughts on on them just one or two if, if you have them uh let's start with mr bankson all right uh yeah right now in our district uh agriculture is a huge need and we've seen that begin to shift over time uh literally being in apopka having lived here for over 30 years uh in the district uh, I really feel like I have a pulse on many of those needs. Now it's expanded and I've been excited to learn what each part of the district needs. Um, For us, we have expansion room and we're growing by leaps and bounds. And so uh, having a workforce, having the workforce housing is a huge need in our area. Uh, Seeing the technology and the different industries come into the area to provide jobs. These are things that we've been focusing on here. Uh, For other parts of our district, they're already built out. The the need is a little bit different, but something else that's been kind of across the board is our ecological uh, needs. We've got our Lake Apopka, and we've seen a tremendous return and and restoring of that lake, and that's something I think everybody wants to see. Uh, It went from the premier uh, freshwater fishing lake in the nation in the 50s to we had all the issues, and again, our agriculture following best practices of the time have now found that these things need to change and grow, and they've made those changes. And so keeping up with the the technology, with the science that helps us do these things in a great way, we have Lake Jewel, same thing, we need to bring those things to, to pass. And I would say the third thing would be our small businesses. We've got to keep that as a core. They're facing the um, uh, the, the problem with uh, being able to get their supplies, being able to, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the term here, um, um, our, ah, bottom line is I was talking with one manufacturer, he said, we can't fill our orders because we're waiting on different things to get here from China. We make the order there, but they don't have to pay for it until they land on our shores. So they stay in international waters until the prices go up and everything they order, they now have to pay a, a higher price for it. And just being able the supply chain, that was the phrase I was trying to think of, just being able to get past this, this is a backup. It's like an accident on I-4. And once it happens in the morning, you'll see that all day long that it affects traffic. So we've got to overcome those things. These are key issues that I'm seeing in our district. Thank you for that. Mr. Ross, same question. You know, one of the, you know, I moved here in 1993 from Indianapolis, Indiana to bring my kids fitness program to Title I students in Orange, Osceola and Seminole County Public Schools. So it's interesting now that I'm advocating for senior care when in the beginning of my life in Orlando was for uh, kids for four and fifth grade uh, kids that were on Title I programs uh, regarding wellness. One of the things you see when you're going out knocking door to door to door in Apopka and I've had the opportunity to meet some amazing people, but everyone in Apopka, in some way, downtown Winter Garden, parts of Wakaiva, uh, et cetera, they are impacted by senior care issues, whether it's themselves or it is their uh, loved one that is in a nursing home. They've dealt with these issues. So when I talk to them, what, you know, when I hand my walk card, the front that Mr. Bankson and I all agree on are conservative issues. On the back side, it's Betty's bill. And I talk about all the different things that I think are important. And you start realizing when you're talking to these folks, somehow they have been impacted by senior care. So rather than give you a list of things, I wanna tell you, I already know that I'm gonna agree with most every conservative issue there is out there. But when it comes to why I'm going to Tallahassee, it is because of Betty's bill. Not because my mom needs a caregiver, she has that in me. I'm more concerned about the people that I saw show up in nursing home um, facilities when she was in there and hospital visits, doctor visits. They have no family. You know, one of the things a nurse mentioned to me the other day when I was at her house, and I'll leave with this. She said, you know, Randy, one of the things you're missing is you don't realize how many people show up and drop off their loved one in an emergency room and we get them well and we're ready to send them home. 
Um, and this was in Apopka, this happened. Mr. And she Ross. said, Randy, we start making phone calls and they ghost their family. They don't, she, we have one of two choices. We either send them on their own out into the street or we put them in a facility. Mr. Ross, if I could, just, just a quick follow-up. I, I, I appreciate your, your views on senior care. I was wondering if there was anything more specific to the district that you had in, had in mind. Well, certainly I, one of the platform issues I have is preserving uh, everything that surrounds Wakaiva and making sure that those areas that are impacted by the district when it comes to clean water and fresh water and land use are done well. I drive out to Sorrento once a week to visit a friend that has a farm out there. And let me tell you, the amount of homes that are going up in Apopka is considerable. Um, whether, whether it be homes, whether it be apartment communities, that area is growing by leaps and bounds. And as a result, that controlled growth, I think is gonna be very, very important to the future of that district in particular. Thank you for that. And actually, that brings us to one um, area that um, in Orange County, um, because of uh, a feature that's slightly outside of your district, um, Orange County sends more sales tax money to Tallahassee and gets back less than any other county in, in the state from what we've been able to figure. And I would like to ask you first off, what should Orange County representatives, the Orange County delegation be doing about that? Secondly, and it's, it's a multi-part question, but I think you can all both cover it. Um, secondly, are you prepared to work with the Democrats in the Orange County delegation? to accomplish whatever you think needs to be done? And and thirdly, where do you think the spending priorities should be? And let's start with Mr. Ross. You know, I'm one of the only candidates in this race that I know for a fact has worked successfully with Democrats. And during the pandemic, I can tell you right now, I had a lot of people think I'm just like one phone call away from the governor or the president. It doesn't work quite like that. But I had multiple families contacting me regarding help. They were have, needing help with their unemployment, et cetera. And I did, even though I'm not an elected official, I reached across the aisle and I was able to work with local Democrats to be able to help some of those families. I am the only Republican that is on the MMRB board um, nominated by a Democrat. Commissioner Meyer Uribe. I think that speaks volumes because what we have to be able to do when we get to Tallahassee is not just dig our heels in on the sides of what we present our, our, our platform on. We have to be able to work with each other. I've been doing that since I arrived here in 1993 when I partnered with Mayor Glenda Hood to create um, the Inner City Games Orlando program. Um, and then when it was time, when I had gone through a domestic abuse situation, I partnered with Harbor House of Central Florida to provide money and awareness for Harbor House. And when I had a friend die of AIDS, I did an AIDS walk team. You know, when I see a problem, I am not a person that ignores it. I try to figure out a way to work with it. And that doesn't, that means that if I have to work with a Democrat, independent or Republican, I've already shown and illustrated, I can do that. Okay. And did you, were you able to address what priorities you think should Orange County should be seeking some of that funding. Oh, there, there's no secret that the affordable housing issue in Orange County is is is, is pathetic. You know, I, I I cannot tell you in Orange, Osceola, Seminole, Lake, all of these different areas are growing by leaps and down, bounds. When you've got a thousand people moving into to Central Florida or to Florida a week, many of them coming to Central Florida because that's where a lot of the jobs are. Um, what are we going to do? Where are we going to put them? I have a good friend of mine. He's actually been, been buying all these. Uh, uh, mobile home parks that are dilapidated, tearing them down and putting tiny homes in them so folks can actually be able to find uh, acceptable affordable housing and live in a clean way. That I think is really important. I think that we cannot ignore that it's just too expensive to live here. I go to the grocery store. I mean, I'm only buying for two people, my mom and myself. Um, and I go to buy a roast that I used to spend $12 on because that's my thing to do. Once a month, I buy a roast and put potatoes and all that. I'm from Indiana. Of course, I do that, right? That same roast that used to cost me $10 or $12 now is costing $22. So I, I take it to the butcher and I say, split that in half for me. You know, because, you know, whether it's at the gas pump or in the grocery store, prices are, prices are killing families and they're certainly killing, um, you know, the opportunity for people to have money to do anything else in their lives. 
Thank you. Um, and Mr. Bankson, did you need me to restate the question? Um, well, let me jump in on it. And if okay. I miss a part, you can bring it back up to me. Great. Um, well, again, that's uh, actually just to, to let you know, for the last six years, the position that I've been in is a nonpartisan seat. And so literally, I have worked together, Democrat, Republican, we have worked together for the issues that we deal with here in Apopka, which is a, a bulk of this district when it comes to the population. And, uh, you know, I, I've sat down together with different ones to say, how can we work together? Uh, yes, I stand upon principles, but I'm also going to be convincing. I'm going to work together. I, I write songs. Uh, I've done that all my life. And they, they're best when we collaborate because people have different facets. The bottom line is let's get something done for the people. So if we can find what we can agree on, begin to move there. I've actually worked with Camille Brown, and she's been very amenable on many issues that are uh, needed here in our area. And we've been able to work together without all of the, the rhetoric and the different things and yet still hold our core values. Uh, so I believe that we can do that. Uh, as far as uh, the things that we need here, I believe one of the ways to do that is to know what each municipality specifically is needed. Needed. I've talked with different ones of the mayors and, and administrators in our district to find out what is it that you need us to advocate for, because we are representatives. I, I really like the title of this office because that's exactly what it means. We represent the people here. So we can find what is it that they want us to advocate for. And then literally, that's why I'm running, to have that seat at the table. We've experienced that here in Apopka where uh, there were federal funds that were, or were distributed and we saw 27 million go to Ocoee and 3 million come to Apopka out of uh, Orange County. And so, you know, sometimes we need to be the one to say, hey, wait a minute, let's make sure that there's a way that these can be distributed in a, a fair manner uh, so that we can take it back to our district and help the needs that are there. And again, to reiterate uh, what's been said before, and I think Randy just mentioned it as well, we need to make sure that we deal with the housing. Workforce housing is a great need, especially in communities that are growing so fast. We're coming very rapidly to the end of our time. Um, but I wanted to um, I wanted to ask one question, and this can be as simple as a yes or no answer, if you like. Um, Florida currently bans abortion after um, the bill says, I mean, the, the law says 15 weeks. It's actually 13. Um, do you support a complete ban on abortion access in Florida? Um, Mr. Bankson? Yes, actually, I'm very unashamedly pro-life. And it's not something that's uncompassionate. You, you, you can't just simply have a mantra without having a heart. And so when it comes to these things, the crux of that issue goes back to the uh, issue of personhood. This is what was said at Roe v. Wade back in 73. And I remember I was much younger then. Uh, but I remember talking with my parents and talking with my mother specifically about this issue and why is it wrong? And, you know, she talked about, well, that's a life in there. That's a baby in there. And so this is an issue that in 73, they they skirted the issue because they couldn't put on with, with a scientific uh, exclamation point when life begins. Well, we know it's life from that beginning moment. But they said, let's focus on privacy. You know what? I, I agree with that. And if there were only one life, I'd be shouting the very same thing. Protect our privacy, protect our rights. But the fact that there two, are two individuals there, now we have DNA, and that's a game changer. DNA is now used to prove cold cases that have been cold for 20, 30 years. Now they can prove a person was present because their DNA is there. DNA establishes us as a unique individual human being. And, you know, they talk about the argument of sentient life. Well, you know, when I'm asleep, I don't know what's going on around me, not to make light of any argument. But honestly, I think if we have genuine conversations, I have said and had those conversations with Democratic uh, candidates, and they've come into the conversation believing one way and left out the door saying, you know what, I really am pro-life. So then the issue of how do we do this uh, legally. So I know you asked, asked uh, maybe for just a one word answer, but uh, I think it's important for us to have that issue and not just be uh, trench warfare over this thing. It's life and we need to all value life from the very beginning to its natural conclusion. Thank you so much. Mr. Ross. Yes, I'm a pro-life candidate, but I believe there are exceptions. And I, I draw that uh, from having talked to many of my friends that are on the pro-life stance. I believe that if there's rape or incest, those are opportunities to consider whether or not, uh, or life of the mother, I believe those are opportunities to consider. And more importantly, you know, someone said something to me today and it was profound. She said, you know, Randy, 
the thing you need to think about isn't just the process. You need to consider the perpetrator, the person who considered, who did, who raped the child, the person who incested the child. And I never really thought about it in, in that that particular space. So I don't support criminalizing abortion. I think it's wrong, and I think we should be pro-life. But at the same time, I think there are considerations that need to be made. Thank you so much. Well, um, we have come to the end of our time. I really so much appreciate you taking the time to spend with us. And, um, and uh, I would like to remind everybody that that this is a Republican primary um, in District 39, so only Republicans can vote. But um, the the top vote getter will proceed to the general election in November. Um, and with that, I'm going to invite you to make some closing statements. Um, Mr. Bankson, can we start with you? Sure. Well, again, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for hosting this. And, and uh, again, to Randy, as we said in another place, we don't consider ourselves opponents in that sense because we believe so many of the same core values. I think that's the important thing. The most important thing is there's a message and I see a cause. It's what motivates me to run. Um, uh, right now, having lived here all of, you know, since uh, 1982, we originally moved. I went away, came back in 92. So over 30 years of living here in the district, I feel like I have a heart for the district and I want to represent. Uh, having served in the last six years, I've even had people from across the aisle say, well, I'm not going to obviously vote in the primary here, but I've watched you. I've seen how you operate. I understand your character and your values, and I'm going to give you my support because I think there's something that's resonating across the board with people. We need to protect our liberty. We need to protect our values. I'm strong in the first and second amendment, the uh, ninth and 10th as well, that we need to take back our, our ability as a state to govern. And I think there's a coming a resurgent of these things. That's exciting. I think people are motivated in this. And I think people more than ever before are listening beyond their regimented thought process to wait a minute, let's listen to the issues and let's really make the best decision going forward. And so uh, for me, that's a motivation to move and, and motivation to serve. Uh, I've been a pastor for over 26 years. We founded our church, again, founded our Christian school. I believe in education. I believe that's a key and an important issue with parents right now. And so uh, that and many other things. I believe we need to be strong concerning our borders. Uh, it's been mentioned erroneously that I, I stand for different things. But my strong stand has always been, you know, when I was young, I was taught you need to wait in line and wait your turn. And I believe that's how we need to address this, not to keep people out. We're a nation of immigrants, but we need to make sure we know who's coming in and what's coming in. We need to support our law enforcement. I've done that consistently in the last six years. I'll continue to do that. And that and many more things, check it out at DougBankson.com and I uh, hope to earn that support. Thank you very much. And Mr. Ross. You know, um, my family was one of those families that came to Orlando in 1971. Uh, when the opening of Walt Disney World occurred. And then in 1987, I completed my inter PR internship at Walt Disney World on the college program. In 1993, I permanently relocated to Orlando and I call it home because I was working with Title I students throughout the Central Florida community because I believe, you know, I, I, I used to weigh 225 pounds. So I understand what it's like to feel like fat, a fat Randy. I call my, I still see now at 165, I still see myself as fat Randy. And so throughout my professional life, getting involved in marketing, advertising and things like that, um, it was interesting to recruit for Walt Disney World, to recruit for Universal Orlando, to be involved in working with those community, those companies that now desperately need uh, support when it comes to hiring employees. And so to get on the other side of this, I, I really wasn't planning to run for public office until I watched what happened with my mom in a nursing home. Even though she was only there for six weeks during that rehab process, it changed my perspective. Betty's bill is something that will not only help people in District 39, and I've actually, Mr. Banks and I have talked about this offline, no matter who wins, assuming if he, if he does, he's also agreed to help me with that project one, one way or the other. And that's to me what we need to see happen in politics, right? Um, I trusted him enough to even say, you know, if I'm not successful, will you help me with this? Because on the bottom line is that's what we miss in politics sometimes. We miss the gifts of the opportunity and the, the journeys that we take along the way. So I'm randyforflorida.com. I've greatly appreciated this opportunity and look forward to everybody voting on August 23rd. Thank you again so much. Fantastic pleasure. And I wish you both the best of luck.